Hello, welcome to God Day. I'm Derek Walker, the pastor of the Oxford Bible Church. Today I want to look at a glorious passage of scripture from Romans chapter 8, from verse 28 to the end. And uh, it's a a real inspiring uh, passage of scripture for us in our lives. And uh, I'm calling this, what shall we say? What shall we say? And uh, that comes indeed from verse 31. What shall we say to these things? And in the context, the things are really the things that happen to us in life. Everything, as it were, that goes on in life. Uh, What shall we say to these things? And I I believe it's talking about uh, not just what shall we say to the truths of God, but it's actually, what shall we say to the different things that, that come against us in life uh, and so forth? What should be our attitude and should we just be passive or are we to be active and to actually speak to, the, to these things? Let's uh, go back up to verse 28, which is such an important promise of God. In fact, if I'm sharing with a new Christian two promises of God. The first one is 1 John 1 9, that if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In other words, you're going to sin, but when you sin, you need to confess it to God and receive forgiveness. That's very important. The second big promise is Romans 8 28, uh, which is what to do when bad things happen to you. How, How do you respond to that? Don't get bitter. Don't blame God. Uh, How do we respond to when bad things happen that is not our fault? Okay, it's one thing if we've sinned, we confess the sin to God and we ask God to restore whatever mess we've created. But what if this mess has happened and it's not our fault? These things do happen. Bad things do happen. And, And it's not God's fault. We live in a fallen, messed up world. But God is greater than these things. And the promise in Romans 8, 28 is amazing. It says, and we know, as Bible believers, we know that all things work together for good. Or, to make it more explicit, God works all things together for good. To those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. And and what's going on here is it gives two qualifications. First of all, you have to be the called according to his purpose. And that's really a name of of a true believer. Because what makes you a believer is that you responded to God's call. God calls you to himself through the gospel. The gospel, God speaks to you through the gospel. He reveals Jesus and he calls you. And if you're a true believer of his, you, you hear his voice and, and you responded and now you are called. Praise God. The church is ecclesia in the Greek, which means the called out ones. We've been called out of the kingdom of darkness into God's kingdom. And so uh, that's the first condition, that, that you're a believer for this promise to be true. The second condition is that for those who love God, or literally are loving God. Now, of course, all true believers love God. Um, We're loyal to God, but it's it's in the present tense. And so the implication is, if if this promise is to really come to pass in a maximal way, uh, we need to continue to love God even when bad things happen. It says, if bad things happen, God will work all these things together for good. Not just the good things, but the bad things too. He will work these bad things together for good. Uh, Particularly if we are called of God and we are loving God. In other words, we keep our faith in God. We thank God. we, We praise God. We love God. We trust God to work this thing out. And then he says we can claim that promise that God's going to turn this for good. He's going to use what Satan sent against you for evil. He's going to work it for good. And that helps you keep a a positive attitude even through difficult times. All right. That helps you to be victorious in that, knowing that God's working it for good. So, for instance, when you go through a trial, one of the great things you can do is actually 
is actually just say, thank you, Lord. I know you're going to work this for my good. Praise God. You're going to turn this setback into a stepping stone. And I've seen that work out often in my life, that things that seem to be very negative things, actually God used it as a learning experience, as, 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 and God would work something good out of it. Uh, and often I found the hardest times when, when life is, is the hardest is actually when I've grown the most spiritually. God has worked it for good. It doesn't say that God does the bad things. God, God is not responsible for evil things in your life, but God is able to work those things for good. Uh, if you continue to love him through that trial, he'll work it for good. Praise God. And then uh, he explains that a little bit in the next uh, two verses. By, and he, what he's basically saying is, God has a plan for your life. And he is relentlessly working that, that plan out. And, and he will even use the negative things that happen in your life. When people mistreat you or or you know, situations don't go your way, and it seems like not working. And if you read the stories of the men of God, you know, like Joseph, for instance, it's, a, it's clear God has a plan for the life, or for his life, but it seems like, uh, and he receives promises and visions from God, but then it seems like it all goes hopelessly wrong, and he hasn't done anything wrong, but everything seems to go wrong, and yet, he kept his faith in God, and actually God even used those negative things to bring about his purpose. And, and so um, God has the last word in these situations. And so knowing this, we can keep our faith in God even when things seem to be going totally in the opposite direction than they ought to be going. And, and so God has a plan for our life that covers every detail of our life. And this is what he says in verse 29, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So God's ultimate plan is to make you just like Jesus. When he says he foreknew you, it means that God knew you from before the foundation of the world. God set his love on you, or in other words is he chose you. And so in the plan of God, he knew you and he knew you'd be a believer and, and he called you to be one of his uh, elect and he loved you from before the foundation of the world. He chose you before the foundation of the world and he predestined you. It, it means he put a plan in place that would ultimately lead to you, your glorification, that you would become just like Jesus. Praise God. And in that plan, he takes into account all the negative things that happen to you, etc. And so you can praise God that God is working all things together for good in your life because you're, you are keeping your loyalty to God. And then he says that, that, that Christ would be the firstborn among many brethren. Praise God. And then he says, he describes this plan. Moreover, whom he predestined, which he did in eternity, these he also called. So the next step is in time now. God called you to himself through the gospel. And those whom he called, these he also justified. When you responded to that call, God uh, put you in Christ. And in Christ, all of Christ's righteousness was, was put to your account. Hallelujah. And all of your sin was put to Christ's account and he took that sin on the cross. And when he saw you clothed with the righteousness of Christ, he justified you, which means he declared you righteous. What that means is he declared you forgiven and now you are in right standing with God. And now you have access to the grace of God and all the blessings of God are yours in Christ. Hallelujah. And that was done at the moment of salvation. And, and then that's not all. He says, those who justified, he also glorified. And what that means is that once we're justified now, the, the Spirit of God gets to work in our life, sanctifying us. And ultimately, we're going to become just like Jesus. We're going to be glorified. In other words, God had, has a plan for us that began in eternity past and is going to continue through this life into eternity in the future. 
And so although God is not the cause of bad things, he is well able in his sovereignty to take all those bad things and work them together for good as we continue to love God through the hard times. And so he comes uh, and, and he says in verse 31, what then, in view of this fact, in view of the fact that God has a plan for your life, that he's working it out, and that he is working all things together for good. Uh, What then shall we say to these things? What should be our attitude towards all the things that happen, all the bad things? And, And let me say as well that I believe that on the cross, you see, how can God work all things together for good? One reason is that on the cross, Jesus took the curse. So the curse um, was taken by Jesus on the cross for us. So, and then he released the blessing. So he took the curse in his death, he released the blessing in his resurrection, which means that he, whatever bad thing happens, he's taken the curse of that so that he's able to turn that thing into a blessing in your life. Again, we're not saying that God's the cause of evil things, but he is able through the cross to turn that thing from a curse to a blessing. All right, so the question is, what shall we say to these things? And and I think that Paul is, is, is actually encouraging us to not take a passive attitude to things like a kind of thing, a fatalism, something bad happens, oh well, you know, It was destined to happen, you know, to this kind of passive doormat approach. No, I don't believe that. I believe uh, he is saying we shouldn't, when bad things come and speak to us, when the enemy speaks to us, when depression speaks to us, when, when doubt speaks to us, when fear speaks to us, when circumstances of life speak to us saying, you know, God doesn't love you anymore, you know, uh, you might as well give up, you're a failure. When whatever these negative voices speak to us, we're not to be passive. In fact, we're meant to rise up. Uh, we're meant to speak back to those things. We are, we, are not, we are to be active. We are to speak God's word to those things, you see. And this is what it's saying. What shall we say to these things, particularly the negative things? What are we to say? All right, this is what we should say. If God be for us, who can be against us? So here's this thing coming to to say, oh, God's finished with you. You know, you wouldn't be in such a mess if if, if God was, uh, loved you, still loved you. No, no, we're not just to take that that negative voice and be passive. What shall we say to these things? This is what we should say. If God is for me, who can be against me? God is with me. God loves me. And nothing can be against me. In other words, nothing can succeed against me because God is going to work that thing together for my good. I will not be defeated by that thing because God is for me. You've got to speak to those things, you see. You, it's don't, don't, you, don't be passive. You have to speak to those things that are speaking negative things to you. What should we say? Well, the first thing we should say is, God, if God is for me, who can be against me? Praise God. And then it says, he, this, we should also say this, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And so that negative voice says, oh, God will never fulfill that promise in your life. You know, you don't deserve it or whatever. And what we say back is, no, God loves me so much He didn't spare his own son. He gave his son for me. Will he withhold any good thing from me? Will he withhold my forgiveness? Will he withhold my healing? Will he withhold my blessing that he's promised? No, if he didn't withhold his son from me, surely he will not withhold any good thing from me. He will freely give me all things. We declare, we speak against that doubt that says God is going to withhold that from you by saying no. God will will freely give me all things. That's what we say to those things. And then sometimes things speak to us, they speak condemnation. They say, oh God, you're guilty, you're condemned. And then Satan, when we do sin, Satan uses that to say, oh God's finished with you. But no, we confess our sin obviously and we believe that God forgives us and that we are forgiven. And so we need to answer back against that 
voice of accusation that says God's not going to really forgive you. And we say this, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Now, what shall we say to these things? I'm God's elect. God's chosen me. I'm, I belong to him. How dare you bring a charge against me? I am forgiven by God. I am clothed with the righteousness of Christ. It is God who justifies. I've been justified by God. God has declared me righteous. How dare you bring that accusation against me? You see, you've got to say, what shall we say to these things? Who is he that condemns? That's boldness, isn't it? You get up in the face of the enemy and say, how dare you condemn me? I have been justified by the blood of Jesus. And then it says, it is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who makes intercession for us. And what he's saying is, I, I say this, that I am not alone here. I have a representative, Jesus Christ, who represents me before God, who is interceding for me and releasing the grace of God and the Holy Spirit for me all the time. I am not alone and I am not cut off from him. I am not condemned. Uh, he represents me before God and he is praying for me. Praise God. And then it says, we should declare this. What shall we say to these things? These things often come and say, you're rejected. You're, God wouldn't let you get in that mess. You know, he can't love you anymore. No, we should answer back and declare, no, we are loved by God. We are not separated from the love of God. We should say, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? We declare, no, I'm not separated from the love of Christ. I may not feel that love right now, but I know from his word that he loves me so much that he died for me. And no one is going to ever separate me from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or the peril or the sword? In other words, these are really bad things that was happening to the Christians. And yet... In the face of the worst kind of situations, we're to rise up and we are to say to those things that I am not separated from the love of God. Even if I die, I'm going to be forever and ever and ever in, under the love of Christ. Hallelujah. We need to declare it, you see. Verse 37, he says, yes, in all these things, in all these terrible circumstances of life, you know, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. And when he says he loved us, it's, it's actually in the past tense. It's talking about his supreme act of love towards us, which is his death on the cross. Because on the cross, Jesus took the curse of all these things and released the blessing. And through that act of love, through Christ who loves us, we are now more than conquerors. So whatever comes against us to defeat us, we are more than conquerors because even those things, those attacks that are sent against us, God's going to turn those things for our good. And so we are more than conquerors, but we must declare it. What shall we say to these things? In all these things, I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loved me. Praise God. And, and we, we declare, I believe these are all the things that we should say to the things, especially the bad things that happen in life, we must declare our faith knowing that God is going to work all these things together for good. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. He paid the price for that on the cross. Praise God. And he concludes in verse 38, he says, for I am persuaded. You have to be persuaded that you are under the love of God, you're under the grace of God, that God's promise is going to be true. And this is what we should say, especially under attack, difficult situations, trials and tribulations. We, what do we say to these things? For I am persuaded, verse 38, that neither death nor life, even if it comes to death, I'm going to go straight into the presence of God. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor principalities or powers, nor things present nor things to come. In other words, no thing that can happen in my life, no thing that can happen in my future, no demonic power or angelic power has the power 
to stop God's plan come to pass in my life because God will take all these things and all these agencies and all these events. He's, he's included them all in his sovereign plan because he's seen everything from the beginning and he has predestined us to glory. Praise God. And therefore, he is able to take all the things and the people in our lives and the, the angelic forces, the demonic forces, and you name it. He can take all of that and he can work all things together for our good. Hallelujah. And therefore, it says, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing, no person, can spoil God's plan for your life. You don't have to, because if you keep loving God through the situation, God's going to work all those things for good. You see, the height, the depth, nothing. He's, he's, he's making it clear. You name it. There's nothing in creating, creation that can stop the plan of your creator in your life. All he asks of you is that you love him, that you keep your loyalty to him through all those difficult situations or when people mistreat you or even under demonic attacks. As long as you keep your love on the Lord, remember that. Romans 8, 28 says, all things work together for good for, to, for those who love God. Literally, it's in the present tense, for those who are loving God. So just continue to love God, continue to praise God, thank him that he is working all things together for your good in that situation. You may only understand it later on in your life or even in, in heaven eventually. We don't have to understand exactly all the mechanics, but we, we believe that God is working all things. He's using those setbacks as stepping stones into your future. You know, if we really believe that, we would be able to praise God no matter what happened. I don't believe in thanking God for evil things. I'm not going to thank God for, for a sickness because God didn't give it to me. But I, am, I can thank God that he will use that test, that trial, that thing, and he'll turn it for my good in my life. And he'll work it for my good. And, and he, will, he will cause me to grow spiritually through having to encounter that negative thing. Praise God. It's a, it's a bit like doing weights in the gym. There's things, resistances coming against you in your life and that, that, that demand that you respond to them. And in the process of that, you will grow spiritually. All right, so it says, neither height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so as long as Jesus is your Lord, uh, you are now connected to the love of God. In Christ, you are under the love of God and you will never be separated from the love of God, which means that he's, he, his love means he's always wanting the best for you. That's what love means, isn't it? He always wants the best for you and he is working the best for you. So in every situation, we believe that God is working. We are not just a victim to bad things happening to us, uh, if we have the eyes of faith, we can see that God, especially as we respond to God properly, um, God is actually uh, wanting the best for us and working the best for us in that situation and forwarding his plan for our life. And the ultimate result of that will probably only be seen in eternity. What, what the character of Christ that God has been able to work in our lives. Um, it will only be revealed in eternity. Because to be honest with you, many cr Christians, you know, go through very hard times. But ultimately, God is going to bring a wonderful glory out of that. Paul says tw two times, in Romans and in Corinthians, he says that the suffering that we face now is nothing compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. And, and so... God will work even the, work, the most evil things, the most evil persecutions. He will work those things out for good. So we need to have the big picture, you see, the big picture that God's sovereignty uh, means that he has a plan for our life. And when bad things happen, let's not be passive. 
let's thank him that he's going to work all things together for our good. And also, speak back to those things. If those things are speaking to you, doubt, depression, condemnation, what shall we say to these things? We must speak back to them and say, if God is for me, who can be against me? How dare you bring a charge against God's elect? I'm chosen by God. I'm justified by God. Hallelujah. And God's verdict on me is all that matters. I don't care about your verdict on me. God has declared me righteous, and therefore I am more than a conqueror through all these things, through God who loved me. Praise God. And I shall never be separated from the love of God in Christ Jesus. When you hear the voice of the devil, you mustn't be silent. You must speak back, and you will, must speak back these kind of things. God is with me. I will never be separated from the love of God. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. If God is for me, who can be against me? Hallelujah. And then you silence the words of the enemy, you see. And if God, if God didn't spare his own son, how will he not with him? Freely give me all things. He will bring all the promises of God to pass. But you have to speak to the things. Don't be passive. Well, God bless you. And remember who you are in Christ. Thank you.